So you're starting a business, but you're completely clueless on what kind of entity you need to select. Do you need a sole proprietor, a partnership, an LLC, a C-Corp, an S-Corp? There's just so many to pick from. Well, we're going to dive into that today. Welcome to the Accounting for You podcast, brought to you by the accounting firm of Adkins and Reynolds CPAs. This podcast is designed to provide relevant tax and accounting information to help you and your business succeed. If you enjoy listening in, please like and subscribe to our channel. Now, on to the show. All right, well, welcome back to the Accounting for You podcast, episode number 12 today. My name is Chris Reynolds. I'm a CPA and partner with Adkins and Reynolds CPAs. And I am Jay Adkins, CPA and partner at Adkins and Reynolds CPAs. So today we're talking about, and we're going to really go into depth here on what type of entity or business structure your new business needs to be. Because we talked on the, the previous episode all about how to set up the business and what you need to do and what you need to think about, but we didn't really go over in depth about the entity selections, and that's really very an important part of that. These entities can be very different in a lot of ways. Uh, tax structure uh, is one of the big ones, but there's also other reasons that you want to have uh, a different type structure. We'll go over all of them. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's just get right into it because this might take a minute. Maybe not. I don't know. But let's start with sole proprietorship. And this is probably uh, the most common and easiest to set up. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, I would say, I don't know, 50% of people probably start, would probably you say? So, yes. Yeah. Um, and it's and that's mainly because it's for one owner. It's easiest to set up. Uh, you don't even have to have a federal ID number to have a sole proprietorship. You're just normally just registering yourself with your local tax department or local state tax department. Um, so when you are a sole proprietor, though, all of those taxes and the income taxes that you're paying are actually going to end up on your personal income tax return. That shows up on a Schedule C uh, of your on your personal income tax return of 1040. Uh, it's important to remember that most of these are going to be subject to self-employment taxes. Uh, so all of that, you're going to have to pay, you know, your income tax on the profits plus your Social Security and Medicare, and you're paying both halves of that, and that's called self-employment tax. And it's important to know that owners in a sole proprietorship don't take a payroll for themselves. They actually just take ownership draws, and that's just a uh, draw of the profits. And you're going to take those, and you're going to pay those taxes on that profit, whether you took the money or if you left it in there. Yes, when you take money out of a sole proprietorship, it's just a flat check that you're taking profits. There's no taxes withheld. You'll have to deal with the taxes in another manner. Uh, one thing I'll add on, you could be a sole proprietor that owns rental property, which is mm -hmm. Schedule E. Then you don't have to deal with all the self-employment taxes on that. But if it's, like Chris said, a Schedule C business where you're providing a service, selling a product, be the Schedule C with the self-employment taxes. Yeah. So if you've got the sole proprietor, you've got one owner. Okay. Now, if you add another owner, the easiest or next step is a partnership. Yes. Uh, if you're a partnership, uh, that is a separate entity filing a separate tax return. And that is the one that if you start a business and you do not select an entity, the go-to uh, uh, entity for the IRS is you'll automatically be considered a partnership. Partnership's going to have some things you might not want to do, so you may want to look at other entities, but if you don't select anything, that's where the IRS is going to put you. Yeah, and so uh, you're, uh, like Jay's saying, you've got a separate income tax return that has to be filed with a partnership, uh, and all that income is actually reported to those partners through a K-1 uh, so then they will actually tax the money on your personal return from the K-1, you know, from the partnership. And based upon the nature of the income, it may be subject to self-employment tax, or if it's like rental income, there's no self-employment tax, but the K-1 breaks that down on as to what you've got to put on your personal tax return. And it's also important that a partnership owners do not take a payroll there either. Again, it's a distribution of earnings. Whether you take the money or not, you're going to pay tax on the net profit of the business. So if you write yourself a draw check, you just get a draw check. There's no taxes coming out. Now, there are other things called guaranteed payments uh, for partnerships that are set up, and that gets way above this topic today. But uh, guaranteed payments can be like for services designated for a certain individual uh, out of the partnership. So, um, all right. So we've got the sole proprietorship, the partnership. Now we're going to get into maybe a little more technical stuff, and that's the C-Corporation. 
the C Corporation, again, is a separate entity uh, and has its own tax return that when a business you know, elects, they can elect to be a C Corp uh, if they're one owner or more owners. Um, one thing that's unique about the C Corp is it does pay its own taxes, unlike some of the other entities we're talking about. Um, the uh, owner can pay themselves in a couple different ways from the C Corp. Um, the, since it is a separate tax entity, the owner can be a salaried employee like any other employee in which there's all the payroll taxes withheld, all the employment taxes paid just like there would be for any other employee. Uh, or you can take out dividends uh, out of the C corporation. Uh, they're taxed a little differently to the individual. There's a better tax rate when they get them. But it is important to know when you take a dividend out of a C corp, it is not deductible on the C corp, whereas a salary is a tax deduction for the C corp tax return. Yeah. So there's really only two ways to get money out of the C corporation, and that's salary or dividends. There's obviously you can a C corporation could loan money to a to an owner or to a shareholder, and but that's going to create an actual loan. So there's there's only just a couple of ways for them really to get the money or the profits or whatever uh, compensation out of a C corporation that uh, that you got to follow. So uh, after the C corporation, we've got an S corporation, and we've had a couple episodes all about S corporations and and all about those rules. But again, you're going to have one or more owners to have an S corporation. It's going to again file that separate uh, corporate or separate entities tax return. It's going to have its own tax return. However, all of the income is not taxed there. It's actually sent out to the individual shareholders via a form K-1, kind of like the partnership. Um, and then you're going to pay tax on that on your personal income tax return. Uh, the income, the net profit of that is not subject to the self-employment tax because as we've discussed before, the owner has to take a reasonable compensation for the services that they're providing to the company. Yeah, the uh, S-Corp provides us um, a gray area um, the IRS gives us that we really uh, like to take advantage of uh, as far as the compensation. Uh, as Chris mentioned, the owner needs to take a reasonable salary for their services, which is going to be a unique thing from each corporation uh, to the next one, depending on the type of service, uh, how much service the owner has to provide to, to the or does provide to the S corporation. They need to be paid for that. That's a salary, has all the basic payroll taxes. Uh, but the S corp dividends, which is basically anything left over, that is the um, basically the person's investment profit coming out of there, uh, subject to all the, the federal and state income taxes, but not subject to the self employment. So this entity provides us with an area where we can save some taxes for the owner. Right. So now the last structure we're going to talk about, and I'm sure everybody's heard a lot about it and you see it on, on businesses and stuff, and that's the LLC and that's limited liability company is what that stands for. And I would like to call it like a little legal umbrella that you put over your tax structure. And personally, this is kind of my default. If I, if somebody's coming to me, uh, this is the one that I really like myself, the LLC, just because it's it's not hard to get into. It gives you a legal protection like a C corporation may, standalone C corporation. Uh, but it gives you the ability to change your tax structures, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, we have uh, many clients that form as an LLC, but then will elect to possibly be an S corporation as far as taxes. That means that they don't have to initially set up as the S corporation. They don't have to pay some of the fees that are involved with officially setting up as a corporation. They have the easier setup with the LLC, but they have all the benefits of being an S corporation. Right. So if you go into a corporation solely or by itself, not through an LLC, you are a corporation and that's what you are. And you'd be a comma Inc. And then you could maybe switch out to an S corp and I'm sure there's rules to get back to the C corp and there's waiting periods and all that. But the LLC allows you to maybe come in as a start with a sole proprietor and then maybe change your tax structure in a year or two as your firm or as your business grows. And maybe you go to this S corporation or you decide it's better to go to the C corporation. Um, so it gives you a lot of planning measures where the other entities 
uh, do not. But again, an LLC is not a tax structure per se or a tax entity. It is a legal entity that houses a tax structure. So it's kind of, like I say, that little umbrella over top of your tax structure. Uh, and then to, to change those tax classifications, there's different forms that you've got to file, and there's certain rules and when you have to file those, and we're not going to go into that today. But And that's where we kind of come into, where we're looking at with tax planning for businesses and, and helping them of going, hey, maybe now's the time to switch that you know, your LLC from the sole proprietorship over to the S corporation. And we can certainly guide you in what the advantages and disadvantages of each of these entities are, because you may start out as one entity and then a little while down the road, things change. You make more money. You're not doing as well. There's advantages to changing the entity, which we can be involved in. Yeah. So I think the key takeaway from this one is selecting an entity can be, you know, kind of difficult to navigate, but that's why we're here to help you in doing that. But it's important to know that selecting the right entity will really set you up for success in the future because, hey, if you're starting a business, you want to be successful. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> All right. And uh, obviously we can do that and we can help you with that. So you got anything to add to that, Jay? Uh, we help many clients with this. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, setting up the entity, uh, as Chris said in the beginning, is very, very important. Possibly changing the entity for tax advantages down the road is something that we would look at that a business owner might not be aware of if they were trying to just do things on their own. Yeah. So, of course, if you have any questions, be sure to reach out to us uh, through our website or call our office with questions. Otherwise, we will see you on the next Accounting for You podcast episode. Thank you for taking time today to listen to our podcast. We appreciate listeners like you and ask that if you enjoy what you hear, please like and subscribe to our channel to ensure you receive the latest episodes as soon as they come out. If you have any questions about the topic we discussed today or would like more information on becoming a client, please do not hesitate to contact our office by visiting arcpas.com or theaccountingpodcast.com.